So that's the win we... So that was on camera. Here we go. This week, we're gonna start digging in on the Hudson. We're gonna see what all we gotta do to... The truck was already running. We're trying to get it to run and drive better. <clears throat> right now, we have an Edelbrock carburetor on here. We're about to switch it out. I'll show you the pile of parts we got over there. We got a different carburetor, different distributor, a new alternator because I stole the one off of this one. Um, we got to get the battery charged. We got to make sure the fuel system still works. It's kind of like a will it run video, but we're just basically changing a bunch of stuff. So let's see what we can do and get this thing on the road. So this is my pile of parts I got here. I got an XL distributor, Amazon Chrome alternator to match all the Chrome on the engine. And we got a freshly rebuilt from a local guy that uh, rebuilds carburetors. And this one's a freshly rebuilt Holly carburetor. So we're gonna swap this one on to the truck and ditch the Edelbrock that's on there. We got a new gasket obviously but we're gonna put this system on the truck figure out what we gotta do to plumb it and do all that stuff get it dialed in and we'll get this running on the truck and get all these other parts in so let me go over there and start ripping some of the stuff off the truck so we can start adding all this stuff back on i also gotta charge the battery so the location of the battery in this truck is right back here you can see it right down there and what i'm just i'm just going to set the the uh, charger up right here reaching the cables over the side of the truck because there's where my power is but that's i don't know why you'd care but that's where we relocated the battery to in here so i gotta get that on the charger i need to make sure that little electric fuel pump right there works because I'm eventually going to put a mechanical fuel pump back on this truck, but I don't think I have one right now. I'm going to double check. I'm going to look in all of my little hidey holes that I have around here that I can think of where there would be one. I really don't want to put the, the Holly fuel system on it. I mean, I do have a second fuel pump. Those Edelbrock fuel pumps just go bad. The little $50 ones you buy from the auto parts store, they're just known for going bad. I've had several of them go out on us over time. But I do have a Holly blue pump if needed. I'm going to take a look in my little hidey holes we got here and see if I happen to have a mechanical fuel pump for a small block Chevy, which I might in here somewhere. So let me dig around in here for a couple minutes to see what i can come up with that one for a y block let's set that out not gonna say there's anything going on with a y block around here but i'm gonna set that out another y block kill switch Holly regulator. I'm gonna put that in with this. King Ranch uh, console lid. I tell you what, you need a core for an alternator. We got one right here, one right here. There's three in this box. I know there's one, there's one at the house. So I shouldn't spend money on a core ever again. 7.34 injectors and uh, HPOP pump. Turbo 350 kick down cable. I know I have another one of those brand new at the house too. We found a gym. I didn't know I had another one of these around. Cowboy hat rack. It's going in the Jetta. I got one of these in the Dooley. I got one of them in my station wagon. I've had one in almost every pickup truck I've ever had. Now I got one for the Jetta. All right, so we don't have a mechanical fuel pump. We're gonna pray that that one works and we're gonna go from there. So let me put all this stuff back. One last spot we can check that I'm thinking of. I might have some extra parts in the back of the chicken ranch. Not in here. So we don't have a mechanical fuel pump around. So we're going to head back in here and keep working. Now 
what we need to do is connect that battery charger like we were talking about and we need to test or this fuel pump and make sure we've got fuel coming out of here i don't know how much gas is in that tank either now we have the battery set on explosion mode we're gonna let that thing fill up with all the juice all the energies and we'll get this set up here now we need to start pulling everything we need to pull off of here and get everything out so let's start with this cadillac air cleaner get it out of the way so now that that's out of the way we need to figure out what all we got to do here so we know this one that's electric choke that's going to stay fuel is going to be routed differently i'm going to undo it and i'm going to see if it'll go around but we know we just got to get everything off of here so let's just start picking away at it what what'd y'all do y'all flip you better okay i'm gonna keep working on this i'm gonna put you on time lapse real quick and i'm just gonna dig into it rip all this stuff out of here and uh i'll be i'll be right back with y'all They look basically identical. This one actually has a nicer looking cap than this one, even though it's an XL. But your fit and finish on this one is less than on the XL. But the whole point is this one, we don't know what the issue is here. We don't know what's going on with the truck. We're trying to pinpoint it. We're kind of throwing parts at it because we've already tried going the normal route of slow diagnostic and we've been doing that for a while so this time we're just completely completely ditching the 80 dollar cheapy parts house crap and we're gonna put in the other parts house crap and we're gonna see what happens here whenever we install this one we're gonna give it a shot plug everything back in but anyway, we're going to put <clears throat> this distributor in. We're going to see how it goes. I'm going to go ahead and slap in this alternator as well. Get these two installed. You know what? Pause on that. I'm going to get that installed real fast. We need to go set TDC so we can install the distributor. So let me install that, and then we'll set TDC. All right, so it's been a couple weeks since we've actually worked on this truck. And... First order of business, what we need to do is put the engine at top dead center at number one cylinder. We're gonna do that real quick. We're gonna drop the uh, starter back in. Once that's back in, we can reconnect spark plug wires, put back in the spark plug that we took out in the number one cylinder. And then from there, we've got parts that we've been waiting on to come in, which is why we took a break from this and worked on all the other stuff. So let me get this done and then we'll get to those parts and I'll show you what we got. All right, so right in here is our number one cylinder. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my finger over this, seal it up. I'm gonna have her bump the key over so we find compression stroke. Bump it, bump it, that's it right there. All right, so on this go around, instead of using the cheap Chinese distributors we've been buying, we went ahead and just went with an XL distributor from the auto parts store. It really wasn't out of line priced. It was like $180 or something like that. Instead of the $80 ones we've been buying from the parts store that have not been working. So we're gonna give this one a shot. So now we're gonna stab the distributor in and we know it's gonna rock a little bit. Good. So start with it kind of pointed straight towards the back uh, even with the back of the engine as it goes in it should rotate that tang up and point it at number one cylinder so before we do that i'm going to take a look at the orientation down in here and see y'all see that flat blade down in there i'm going to make sure that that 
and right now straight across so that's straight across big flathead right here i'm gonna look down in here see and it couldn't be any more inconvenient on a chevrolet Turn that oil pump. Now, if all is well, should just drop it right in. Which we all know, it's never that easy. I think we might have got lucky. I'm gonna go ahead and pop on. What we did was we have Sharpie marks on these, on the top side of all of our spark plug wires numbering them so i'm gonna go ahead and pop on number one so that way we don't lose anything so now i can go ahead and lock all this down now i'm going to take distributor lockdown piece here and i'm just going to go ahead and set her in place not saying that it's down for good got all the spark plug wires on one eight four three six five seven two Everything is snapped in. Got the vacuum advance put on. I need to hook up these two wires real quick for your tack and battery. But I think I'm going to hold on that for a second because I want to go get one of those quick pigtails put on there to make that easier instead of you trying to fish in the little piece. So that way I'll just run to the auto parts store, pick up one of those. You just snap it on there and make it a lot easier on yourself. Now that that's in, we believe we're sitting in top of the center. I can go ahead and put back in cylinder one spark plug, but we can hold on that for a second because we got a fresh rebuilt Holly carburetor going on. After dealing with as many Edelbrocks as we have, we've had way more luck out of Holly carburetors than out of the Edelbrocks. So we've been slowly switching everything over to Holly carburetors because they just, they just work. This one's now getting a Holly. So now I'm gonna go ahead and lock this down. Yes, we got fueling. We've got all of that stuff, figuring out where all the vacuum and everything's gonna go on here, but we'll figure all that out because now everything's a little bit different than it was with the old carburetor. So let me go ahead and get this locked down real quick and we'll move forward. The spark plug, this truck has an S10 front clip and the engine is sitting further back. The actual cross member is right about here where the radiator is at. So whenever you're, all of this stuff was put in by the original builder he shoved everything back and we had to try to find headers that fit and that do but they are not the easiest for spark plug wires actually probably some of the hardest spark plugs you'll ever change Still trying to get this one threaded. Still trying to get it 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 threaded. I got it threaded. All right, so here's how you put a set of plugs in this car. You don't. So that's in, it's that simple. You just you just thread it in there and it pops right in. It's easy. I, mean, I don't know why you didn't. I don't know why you didn't get it done already. It's easy. I don't know why it took you so long. Anyways, moving past that. All right. So here in the back of the truck, we've got a electric fuel pump right here. That's one of the Edelbrock jobs you can get from the auto parts store, but they are bad about going out. If you let them sit. For any short period of time, you the diaphragms in there will go bad. Uh, it won't pump fuel. If you have a filter in there, such as I do, whenever you 
turn it on, it'll look like it's pumping. You'll see fluid moving there, but we have everything opened up on the front end of the truck and there's no fluid coming out. So it's not actually doing anything. So we're actually gonna go back old school on this truck and go back with a mechanical fuel pump. After running a handful of those and them going bad and all the different situ situations we've had with electric fuel pumps and everything, mechanical fuel pumps just seem to work. If you're doing carbureted, just put a mechanical fuel pump on it. It's not worth all of your time, headache, and money to try to run something else. Just run the mechanical pump. So we've got a super awesome $35 Amazon link right here. It cost almost as much money for the push rod for it. So we've got a Jegs push rod here with the brass end for the cam inside. So that's gonna go inside of the engine like so. But now what I need to figure out is the reason why we went with this one and not just your typical auto parts store one was the front of the truck. We don't know how everything is gonna land. And this one, you can unbolt it and change the orientation on how your two barb fittings come out. So front of the engine here, I don't know if that's good, if we need to go that way, if we need to go this way, how it needs to land in the front for this. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take all of this stuff, just set it up there for now. Because what we need to do now is get rid of this mechanic or this electric fuel pump. So we'll reroute our fuel line, just get rid of all of this, probably just turn this fuel line and just run it straight into the back side of this fuel filter here, and we'll be good. So we'll do that real quick, get that set up. We can start looking at the front side of the truck, see what we got going on up there. All right, so for now, we just got it run around and into our filter. And we just have this sitting here in place only because it's difficult for me to climb in and out of the back of the truck. So I'm going to leave that there for now. I can come back and get that off. It's unplugged, so it's not going to be doing anything, even though it doesn't work. So leave that there for right now. Let's go back up to the front of the truck and work on fueling. So now, next step is unbolting the fuel block off plate here, popping this off, and then cleaning this gasket surface so we can put on, slide in the fuel rod and put in the uh, mechanical fuel pump. So I'm gonna fiddle with that for a couple minutes and try to figure out how this has gotta go. And let me get it mounted and I'll get back with y'all. All right, so it's the next day. Let me show you what we got done. We got the fuel pump mounted, fuel line routed, and then the other fuel line going up. Right now I have it sitting in that cup because we're about to prime this fuel pump. I want to make sure I see it coming out the hose on the other end over there. We've got all the stuff hooked up. The only thing I don't have hooked up is this vent hose. Apparently this carburetor has a vent to the front bowl. This is some kind of factory holly to something else. And that is a vent to, it says to the fuel bowls for, I, I don't I don't quite understand what it is and I'm not quite sure where to put it out at because it's not just gonna run fuel out of there, but it's like vapors, air vapors. So I don't know. I'm gonna leave it like that for right this moment. But we have distributor. I put a I put a new clip in there, the quick snap in clip on that. So that will if there's any reason why we need to disconnect it, easily disconnectable. Like I said, we got the fuel running into there right now. Crap. I didn't hook up the throttle cable. Okay, so we need to do that real quick. But before we do that, let's get the fuel to here. So let's do that real fast. So we're not getting anything yet, but I'm wondering, are we having a push rod problem 
Are we having some kind of issue? Reason why, or is it just not sucking it out yet? Let me do some investigating and see what we can do about trying to prime that fuel pump. Apparently we have a dud Amazon fuel pump. Who'd have guessed? Amazon. Doesn't have a good product. So we're going to go. Dad's going to run tomorrow while I'm at work over to the hot rod shop, the local hot rod shop. Go pick one up from there because we want a clockable style where you can unbolt it and rotate it like that one that's in there. I don't know how good that light is for you to see, but that one is unboltable and able to move where the factory ones are uh, a straight fitting and then a threaded fitting off to the side. And they're kind of like, you know, lazy eyed one direction, but isn't really going to be that much of a problem, but we've already gone with this style. We have the fittings for the style. I've already made the lines for this style, so I think we'll run with this one, this style of design, and put that one in there. So he's going to run tomorrow and go pick one of those up. So we're on hold. So another day waiting on parts. But we've got the rest of the stuff all finalized. I'm going to go ahead and put that uh, throttle cable on the carburetor real quick so that way it's done. And throttle cable's on there. Distributor's hooked up. Everything's hooked up as long once we start getting fuel from the tank to the engine, we'll be able to start test firing it and get timing set. And then this truck will be a running driving truck. So we're waiting on a fuel pump. Let me get that uh, throttle cable put on there. All right, so it's a new day, guys. We're in here. I'm gonna try to fill up these bowls again. I'm not sure how empty they are from it sitting from last time because we didn't really get it quite started so I'm gonna fill up these bowls fast so we got a new uh, mechanical fuel pump I have the old one just disconnected down there I want to start this and just make sure the push rod length and all that's correct because it sounded like we were making a little tink 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 noise and I'm not sure if it was because we were backwards on our timing or if it was because we had a push rod distance problem. Super simple to check, just two bolts, disconnect that, try it again, see how it runs. Runs good, then it's that. If it doesn't run good, still makes the same noise, and I'm gonna say we're 180 out. I know this engine didn't have any noises prior to this, because this engine used to be in my 52 Ford truck. Now it's in here, because I didn't want chrome, and he did. So we're gonna, we're gonna test it out now. feel like, I wonder if, let me look into this. I did a little bit of looking into it just now, and it looks like these blades of the fan on the alternator look like they might be, how can I get you all to see? Look like they might be colliding right here with the alternator bracket. So we're gonna keep an eye on this as we move forward, but I need to change out fuel pumps real quick and I need to re-stab the distributor. So let me do all that real fast. So I just tested and I know we got fuel coming up to the carburetor. So now 
Let's go ahead and see if we can get this thing busted off. You know what? Hang on. I think I figured out what the click, 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 click noise is. I think our alternator is, the fan is hitting this bracket. I think I just told y'all about that a minute ago. I'm gonna go ahead and loosen this, flip the alternator out, and grind the backside of this bracket real quick, and then put this back in, and then we'll test it. So that way we can see if it's making noise still. So. this set we know we have fuel coming up here I tested that off camera I made sure we had fuel and then tested that off camera so here we go we're gonna try to fire it up give it a shot I'm happy with that timing. I'm gonna double check. We're gonna shut the key off. Okay, now it's at running temperature. I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, it busts right off. So I'm gonna call that good on timing, lock it down and then work on setting the carburetor. Setting the, uh, setting the air bleeds on the carburetor real quick. So I'm gonna lock that down real fast. So I think I've got everything pretty well dialed together, at least to make a little test run around the block. Let's see how it hits. Let's go around the block. got some kind of a brake catch or something going on because this car never I'm not even hitting the brakes right now we're coming to the stop coming out of the shop and there it is complete stop I never hit the brakes so we got some kind of a brake catch but I just wanted to show y'all real quick it runs it drives it just ain't happy with the fact that it's fighting the brakes right now. I mean, I'm having to ride it and then you let off and it's fighting itself back to a stop and it's making it stumble and pick up. So we're going to put it back away. And the next thing I guess we got to work on is trying to get the brakes freed up. I guess, I guess if you let them sit for a little while, they don't like it. Fires right up though. Just hear the tire spinning, just trying to fight it, fight itself to go back inside of the shop. So now all we gotta do is get the brakes freed up. So that's what we're gonna work on next. But for now, we got it running. Small bar 350 truck, been sitting for a while, needing to get it fired up, and it's finally running again. So that's the wind we... So that was on camera. We just blew a radiator hose. Okay. 
So apparently we have an overheating problem. We got to address. So, uh, so that's something that we got to fix next week. But besides the point, we got it running and we got the brakes to address. We got something going on over here to address. Just a little heads up. Yeah, I got her clean. Squeegeed everything out. Clean the engine bay. It's all. It's all cleaned up. But I'm not sure what exactly caused it. Obviously, we're getting hot. But I did find a rad cap. It looks like that. So we're probably going to be in the market for a rad cap. Uh, we blew it off of here. I want to get rid of this one and just put a regular rubber hose on it. At the time, we were really liking the way that these looked. Deciding against doing that, just running some normal hose because it did slip off of the little reducer piece that was on here. So we're going to reroute that. Um, trying to think of what else. Bottom is already a solid rubber hose. So the top just needs to be replaced as a solid rubber hose. Got everything in here all wiped down and cleaned. So that's where we're gonna leave it. So thank y'all for watching. We got her running. So what a total loss of a video. We did get her running, got her ready. Now, moving forward, we can get the brakes figured out. We can do what we need to do back here in the bed and solve the interior and running boards, front bumper, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we got a lot of stuff to do to this truck, full interior. Right now you just have the bare bones of what you need. You got something on the floor, you got something to set your butt on, something to steer with, and a way to open the doors. You got bare bones in here right now. We gotta get that completed. We gotta get a way to haul stuff in here, like all your luggage and all that going back and forth to car shows. Uh, some spare tools and stuff like that. So these being road vehicles, you want to make sure you get all that kind of stuff sorted out ahead of time. So get all that back here. Um, up front, we know we were wanting to change the front bumper style and we know we've got an idea up our sleeves for the running boards. So moving forward, we can get the brakes working right. We can solve whatever that overheating issue just was. We can solve that, probably dig into that, try to get that fixed, and then progress on this truck. But it's running, fires right up, idles great, runs great. So the carburetor and distributor solved all of our issues we were having with this thing not running correctly. Because that is the best this truck has ever run, ever, is right now with this distributor and this carburetor. But, all right, guys, thank y'all. See you next week. Don't forget to like and subscribe, share, do all that stuff. We appreciate it. We're growing. We're just not growing super fast. We don't have a big following behind us, but we're getting there, guys. It, it, we're, we're, we're working on it. But thank y'all. Y'all have a good one. <laughs>